Good morning. We're going to go ahead and get started this morning. Uh, obviously, thank you all for being here today. My name is Mike Shavey. I work here at Grand Rapids Community College. And on behalf of the Collegiate Network, the Volunteer Managers Association of West Michigan, and the Heart of uh, West Michigan United Way, uh, we want to welcome you to this year's third annual Summer Summit. Uh, we have packed a lot of good information to today's summit, and we are very excited to be hosting this year's summit at GRCC. Um, the first thing I want to do is actually uh, walk you through today's agenda, which is in your packet. As you open your folder, the first thing you should see in the pocket there is the parking pass. So hopefully you all successfully found parking. You all be happy customers to know that this is your free ticket out of the parking ramp. So do not ram the gate, please. So simply just hand your voucher to the parking attendant and they will open up the gate. Uh, the next thing is going to be your agenda, which is uh, this white form with nice graphic on there. Um, the Summer Summit is actually going to be two areas on campus. Uh, it's going to be in the Multipurpose Room in the Applied Technology Center, otherwise known as the ATC. And we are actually currently located in the Multipurpose Room, which is where we'll be for lunch and the panel discussion. And I just want to direct your attention to the breakout sessions area first. Um, we'll be dividing uh, you into two tracks, track one and track two. So if you look on your name badge, you should see a colored dot. And on that dot, uh, there is a number that represents uh, what track you're in. So it's either going to be a one or a two. We, have, we do have limited seating in each of the sessions. So please uh, attend the session that you are assigned. We have two ushers that are actually going to be helping you uh, get to your locations. And um, there will also be signage throughout the campus to help direct you. So if Sierra and can please stand up. She's actually going to be uh, helping those in track one located in uh, ATC. Actually, it's not going to be 118. First change this morning. It's actually going to be in 120, which is connected to 118. Thank you, Sierra. And if Boomi could please stand. Boomi is actually going to be uh, your usher for track two. And your first session is actually going to be in room 122. Each session will be uh, repeated. And uh, another quick tricky thing that you need to be aware of, um, during the morning breakout sessions, you will not move. You'll actually stay in your rooms. And the presenters themselves will actually move. And actually, then during the last breakout sessions, uh, you will switch uh, rooms during those two sessions. Um, again, you'll have time at roughly 315 um, in the ATC before we end the summer summit with our partnership development discussion, where everyone will have an opportunity to network and develop collaborations with each other and with each college represented here today. On the, black, on the back of your agenda, You'll find short bios of today's presenters. You'll also notice that on the bottom of the page, all of the documents in your folder, as well as the PowerPoints and handouts during the sessions, will also be made available to you via our Summer Summit resource website. So if you actually go to this website, all of the handouts, and you can print them at your leisure, um, they'll actually be made available for a year. So you can view all the PowerPoints, all the videos, anything that we use during today's sessions you'll have access to after uh, the Summer Summit. They're actually alive today. Uh, we have a few more helpful documents in your folder, such as the White Service Project Placement Creation Form, which Dr. Wayne Sneath will review in just a few minutes. Um, the yellow sheet describes the individual colleges and universities and their programs, priorities with their dates. The blue sheet are simply definitions of exponential learning that we'll be using throughout the day, as well as a contact listing of all the individuals who are here today. And of course, uh, the pink sheet, I believe, is our evaluation, which will also be emailed to you uh, via a Zoomerang survey. We are fortunate uh, today to have our excellent media services videotape today's sessions, which will be made available um, on YouTube. And they'll also be made available on that Summer Summit resource website as well. And again, this is our third Summer Summit. 
uh, brought to you actually by way of partnership. And this year, our theme is Building Sustainable Partnerships for Greater Community Impact. Three organizations have come together who are very familiar with this concept of partnership. The Collegiate Network, which is a group of West Michigan College and Universities, uh, administrators of civic engagement and service learning centers. The network often meets to share best practices and to focus on having a strategic um, vision for their each institution. Um, they are interested in, in better understanding uh, local nonprofit organizations and, um, and their volunteer needs, and together they can create uh, meaningful service experiences. The Heart of West Michigan United Way has always been a huge asset to our nonprofit community, and Jane Royer, director of the Volunteer Center, has been doing an excellent job in working with the Collegiate Network and creating a structure for assisting students and community members in connecting to volunteer opportunities, and we thank Jane and United Way for their contributions today. At this time, I'd like to bring up Joy Dornboss and Tina Dros Drosky, who will share with you another valuable partner of the Summer Summit the Volunteer Managers Association of West Michigan. I'm Joy Dornboss. I'm the advisor this year of, of Volunteer Management of Western Michigan and Association of Western Michigan. And um, I'm here just to say that um, I'm happy that we're able to work with the Collegiate Summit and with United Way because I feel this is a valuable way for us as volunteer managers, those of you who are here, to connect with the universities here in town and to find out how we can best use students in our different um, organizations. And uh, it, there is a brochure in there, if you're not familiar with our organization. We have a website that's also you'll find on the brochure. So check us out. And um, if you are a member of VMA, would you raise your hand there in this room? So you see people at your table. So if you have any questions about our organization, feel free to speak to one of them. I want to introduce Tina, who is the president this year of VMA. And she's going to tell us a little bit more about what is available through VMA. Again, thank you for coming, and it's a pleasure to be a part of this um, summit. It's very, I've been to the, f the second one, which was last year, and again, this one, it's, we, uh, I've been part of the planning, uh, attending some of the meetings, and a lot of work went into this, and I know you'll be very pleased. Uh, volunteer Management of West Michigan has been, I believe, uh, started in the middle 70s already and um, has been uh, actively um, a part of the community and are uh, getting together with other volunteer coordinators. Uh, it's important to connect, to network. We have educational events, and it's really great to be a part of this and even more uh, better to be on the board. And, um, would the board members that are here please stand up? This is the board, part of the board of the West Michigan uh, Volunteer Management of West Michigan, and thank you. And uh, you may talk to either one of them uh, if you want more information in joining us and being a part of, again, on the website, vmawm.org uh, has a lot of information as well. The newsletter you will find in your packet and very nice newsletter. I'm very proud of that. Thank you, Cindy. Uh, she uh, took care of that for us. And is there anything else I need to? Our membership fee is $50 a year, and that's quite reasonable because it includes a couple of meals, uh, educational programs for an entire year. So it's very, very inexpensive and very worth it. Thank you. Thank you, Tina and Joy. Um, VMA, I mean, hosts a lot of uh, networking opportunities for those that are in nonprofit organizations doing volunteer management work. And so I'd encourage you to become a member. Uh, it's been a huge asset to volunteer managers and nonprofit and just this community alone. Um, a quick refresher. Don't want anything to crash on me quite yet. Um, uh, let's see. When the Summer Summit planning team got together to plan uh, out this year's summit, we wanted to be sure to incorporate much of the feedback from previous year's summits. Um, 
Requests included uh, increased awareness of how to collaborate, more networking time, and how to create more student-friendly volunteer experiences. One of the most critical pieces of feedback was the concept of partnership and collaboration. And it was not just between nonprofit and higher education, but also the corporate sector. And we thought that this was a great um, idea as West Michigan has an excellent corporate service community. And I just wanted to show you a quick video to illustrate the power of a partnership that includes all three sectors, higher ed, nonprofit, and the corporate. And there you go. And I know um, actually in West Michigan, we do a great job in doing large events, service projects like this. And I know United Way has done an excellent job every year doing day caring and they work very well with the corporate sector. And I know in higher ed institutions, every year we do our own service projects like Make a Difference Day and we're connecting our college students to the community. But this is a great example of all of them working together, which is what I think that we can achieve here. Um, and you'll have opportunities throughout today to have that networking, to have those discussions amongst you. And especially at the end of the summer summit, there'll be the partnership discussion facilitation experience will you be able to kind of create and or um, brainstorm ideas or concepts such as this. Um, at this time, we're going to begin our first session today titled Civic Engagement and Experiential Learning. And I'd like to introduce Dr. Wayne Snee. Uh, Wayne is an excellent colleague and an even better friend. So I hope you enjoy uh, this session and today, the Summer Summit. Good morning. Thank you, Michael. I appreciate that. Very glad to see so many folks here. As Mike said, our third year at this, and we've been growing each year, and we're really happy to see this kind of turnout and also the broadening of the kind of groups of folks that are part of this experience. This session <clears throat> this morning, very briefly, in about 50 minutes or so, will accomplish a couple of things. Um, we'll go over some very basic terminology that you'll probably hear repeatedly throughout the day, so we're trying to set some basic context for what we're doing. And then you'll also hear very briefly from each of the colleges or universities that are here about their programs. The purpose of this is to give you some opportunity to be thinking as you move through the sessions today about the kind of partnerships, projects, needs that your organization has, but also the assets that you have within your organization, no matter where you come from, from whatever sector, nonprofit, higher education, um, or corporate um, uh, sector. So. Um, in your packet is, as Mike mentioned earlier, a white planning sheet. And as you move through the day and you think about the terms that I'm going to explain here in some detail, be taking some notes on that sheet. It's called Planning Service-Based Placements and Projects with Colleges and Universities. And we'll use this during the final session, but we wanted to give it to you up front so that as you move through the sessions, you can begin to think about possibilities. And no matter what sector you come from, what can you bring to the table? And what would you also like to get from an, a partnership experience with another organization? Where we are. So in higher education, sometimes we can get caught up in a dizzying array of terms for the kind of work that students do in the community. And we want to try to define at least four or so of the basic kind of terms that we use so that as you're thinking about these projects and making connections, particularly with colleges or universities, you may have a better sense of expectations. Because students are coming to higher education now, I think, much more savvy about their service experience, expectations for opportunities to get involved in the community. They're coming out of high school, some of them now requiring community service, public service as part of a graduation requirement. Increasingly, colleges and universities are doing the same thing. So these kind of service opportunities that I've outlined here are probably broadly understood under the concept of experiential learning which um, by definition is out of classroom experience. It's, a new, it's a, not a new trend in higher education, but probably within the last 30 years, service 
to the community has become a much bigger part than some traditional kinds of experiential learning. But how are students able to make some connections between what they're learning in the classroom and community-based projects through particularly the process of structured reflection, whether that happens with a professor in the classroom or we hope increasingly with partners in the community who help students understand how they can make a difference, how they can build their professional skills, and how they can come to understand themselves as uh, important participants in uh, the civic life of the community. Most of you are probably familiar with traditional volunteering definitions. Um, you have students come to you in volunteer capacities, you have lots of other folks, particularly the nonprofit folks come to you uh, in traditional volunteer um, experiences. And this is one, there are hundreds of definitions of volunteering. This is one definition. Um, typically this kind of experience for students is um, not a mandatory part of their college or university experience. Uh, it is typically, obviously, unpaid experience. They often do it through student clubs or organizations, um, student life experiences, sometimes on their own, simply because it's an important part of their own history and their own family experiences, or they've been part of it as part of faith-based experiences in their uh, high school time or in their adult life. But volunteer experiences can fall into a couple of different um, models, if you will, placements and projects. Placements are typically um, kind of designed to make the ongoing, uh, meet the ongoing needs, rather, of community organizations. An example here would be a student serving in a mentoring program as a mentor to a youth. Uh, a project is what Mike was talking about earlier, probably so what we saw more in the video. Short-term kind of experiences, students may do Days of Caring Project, Make a Difference Day, Martin Luther King Day of Service. Increasingly, we're seeing these kind of event-based service opportunities be an important part of what uh, is happening in higher education. Service learning is a movement probably of the last 30 years or so, uh, both in high schools and in colleges and universities. And the intentional part of service learning is for students to make a connection between their learning experience in a classroom and the service that they're performing in the community through the process of reflection with the intent of building a longer term commitment to service uh, through their life. And again, these probably fall into placement and project kind of formats. Um, in higher ed, the standard has become for students in a course, to, uh, a placement in an academic service learning course, to spend typically 20 to 40 hours during a semester performing service in a community organization. So the example there that I've given, a psychology student may serve as a support person for um, a client support group for homeless youth. That may be part of a psychology class, a social work class, et cetera. This may be an optional part of a class or a required part of a class. A project-based service learning is, is increasing as well. And what we're seeing there is students are working, for example, here in a marketing class to produce, over the course of a semester, a, a tangible product for an organization, a business plan, a website, a database, an oral history of clients. And you'll see, as you learn, go up throughout the day, you'll see a wide range of examples from the different colleges and universities of these kind of projects. They tend to be time-bound during a semester but they're also pretty intense because you get the benefit of working with a group of students under the supervision of an instructor to produce um, a very tangible product for an organization. Internships are probably things that all of you are fairly familiar with. Many of you may have done them yourselves in college. Uh, you may have uh, children that are doing them. These are longer term experiences, but we're seeing a lot more students do service-based internships at nonprofits. As we know, the nonprofit sector is growing it's going to grow substantially in the next 10 to 15 years. There are many more opportunities for students to do internships in nonprofit organizations. And uh, there's a greater desire for students to do this kind of work because they see the impact that they can make. And so while every institution differs, there are some basic guidelines around internships. Typically, there are 150 hours or more. I've seen them up to 300 or 400 hours of time throughout a semester or over the course of a couple of semesters. They can be part or full time through that semester, so sometimes it's a few hours a week or more. They're usually part of a student's degree plan, meaning they're tied very specifically to what they are studying, and they may or may not be a requirement of that student's degree plan. 
And they're usually taken concurrently with an academic course, which helps the students to process the experience. And the instructor and the student have very close connection with the site supervisor at the corporate entity or the nonprofit or government organization. One final uh, type here, and again, this is not an exhaustive list, but this is a program that I'm not sure gets as much press as it should uh, among the community. It's part of a federal program called Community Service Work Study. And students, <coughs> some of you may have had work study jobs while you were in college. Again, some of you may have children that have work study jobs. They fall into two basic categories. The kind of jobs that happen on campus, in our case here, are more importantly the kind of jobs that happen off campus. So a student as part of his or her financial aid package if they are eligible, will receive a certain number or a certain amount of money or hours that they can work in community-based placements to help service nonprofit organizations. They need to be a, a 501c3 or type of nonprofit organization for the student to serve. But typically, students have eligibility up to 15 to 20 hours a week to serve in any capacity that's agreed upon in partnership between the higher ed institution and the nonprofit or government organization. Um, they are paid for their experience, but that pay typically comes from the college or university experience, uh, through the college or university office. Sometimes there is a small match on the part of the community organization, but typically, I think in our community, most of the time students are paid through uh, the college or university. This is a mandate of higher education. Every higher education institution that accepts federal funds on any level are mandated to spend at least 7% of their budget that they receive from the government in these kind of positions. And so it's not something that institutions can not uh, engage. And increasingly, I think they're seeing the importance of these kind of positions for students in terms of their own career development and their participation in the community. These, are, these kind of programs are often uh, monitored through different offices. It may be financial aid. It may be career services. It may be our offices in service learning or civic engagement. Each institution can tell you who is the point person on their campus for community service work study positions. What we're going to do here for the next uh, few minutes is give you an overview of each of our offices. And I'll be kind of passing off uh, the microphone here to the different representatives so that you'll be able to get a sense of who we are, begin to put faces to names, and uh, think, begin to think again throughout the day how you might partner with us around some of these different opportunities, but also don't let these definitions limit your thinking in terms of partnerships. Okay. To start with Davenport's work, we kind of fall into two basic categories in our experiential work. In our academic area, uh, we focus on academic service learning, so the kind of projects and placements that I mentioned earlier to you, uh, internship work, which can be in nonprofit or other organizations. Practicum and clinical experiences are part of typically our School of Health professions, although Davenport does have what we call a service learning practicum course, which we've been working to build within the last year, which would place students in the community for a substantial amount of hours per semester, about 90 or so for a three credit hour course to do significant projects or placements with nonprofit organizations. We also consider our study abroad program under our experiential uh, efforts at Davenport as well. In the last year, we had about 320 or so students participate in academic service learning placements and projects in the community, um, serving about over 4,000 hours to uh, nonprofit organizations. And actually one of the ways that we've begun to calculate the value of this work. Many of you are familiar with an organization called the Independent Sector, which calculates the value of a volunteer hour. So as you are working within your own organizations and thinking about how to quantify what the value of your volunteer hours are to your organization, the Independent Sector, independentsector.org, uh, gives annually uh, a value to volunteer hours, which um, can help us to make the case, if you will, for increased volunteering in our organizations, and certainly within higher ed when we talk about why this work is important and valuable. I believe within the last year, Jane could help me, probably about $20.25 an hour for volunteer work, what the average uh, equivalent would be. So it's an important way to help make the case uh, within new organization. Um, on the student life side of our uh, work at Davenport, Sierra Dembski, if I would introduce her, she's our volunteer coordinator. You met her earlier um, at Davenport. She is part of the AmeriCorps VISTA program, uh, which is a really important program that helps support this work across uh, through Michigan Campus Compact, a service organization in the state, throughout the state. 
Uh, we have several programs. Our service scholars program, which is an AmeriCorps program. Students serve 300 hours or so uh, of their time uh, in the community in return for a small scholarship towards their education. We have mentoring programs through the uh, public schools. Uh, we have a project called DU Cares, which is the adoption of an organization in the community over the course of, we hope, several years to build this wide range of experiential opportunities at Davenport, service learning, internships, work study. So we've been partnering in the last couple of years with Hope Network as our partner, but we intend to move that work to other organizations at Davenport within the next few years. Alternative Spring Break is probably what you saw happening in the, in the video. I'm not for certain on that, but students instead of taking a traditional break, will travel to some part of the country or even within the state to help make a difference in short-term service projects. Other events, poverty awareness, adopt a family at the holiday time, uh, days of service like the Martin Luther King Day of Service and Make a Difference Day. Uh, last year we had about 500 students involved in that, devoting about five, over 5,000 hours of service to the community. So in total at Davenport, we've got about 2,300 students on an average basis involved in our average basis per year involved in all these types of experiential learning opportunities so we look forward to the chance to uh, for representatives from Davenport to talk with you today to think about opportunities so I'm going to pass it along to Valerie or Boomi Thank you, Wayne. So um, good morning, everyone. My name is Bumi Fadashe, and I coordinate the Community Service Learning Center at Grand Valley State University. Um, just want to, first of all, acknowledge and recognize that Grand Valley's service offering offerings may be a little unique. Um, we have several representatives in the room that um, are very much a part of the service offerings at Grand Valley. I first want to acknowledge Ashley Nichols from the Women's Center. Ashley, raise your hand. And is Julia here? Hi, Julia. So these two individuals are very much um, woven into the service offerings at Grand Valley, and you will have an opportunity to connect with them um, during the later part of our discussion today. I'd also like to acknowledge um, individuals, um, Quincy Williams. Quincy, are you in the house? Quincy is a, um, a very integral part of the service offerings at Grand Valley. He is the director of the American Humanics Program at Grand Valley as well as the internship coordinator um, for the School of Public and Nonprofit Administration. And I'd also like to acknowledge Janine Brown. Janine is in the house too. So all of these individuals from Grand Valley, you will have the opportunity to connect with. Janine represents our internship. Um, she's an assistant director of the um, Career Services Office. So. Um, as you can see here, our mission is to prepare students to become citizens of a global society and challenge them to be committed to a life of community service. We offer lots of programs, um, our annual days of service and um, other service opportunities, as, um, as Wayne mentioned. And then the coordinator of these opportunities is also in the room, Joshua Lee. He's our graduate assistant for service initiatives. He puts on all of the one-day service programs. Um, other student engagement, we have um, our housing service learning program, and we've also tried to hone in on engaging faculty in service learning, so tying in the academic service learning that, that Wayne mentioned. And as you can see here, some of the statistics, um, we have a great alternative breaks program. Um, we received um, um, some awards for our Westtown Jubilee Housing Collaborative Project. So you'll have an opportunity connect with, to, to, to connect with all of us um, later on today at the partnership development session, and we very much look forward to working on those partnerships with you. I wanted to recognize a couple other, take a moment more to recognize a couple other Davenport folks that are here. Natalie Wagner is our Director of Student Life. She's another resource for you. And in the back of the room, I believe, Dr. Terry Tomazak who is one of our faculty at uh, Davenport, who has been very involved in service learning. She's also a liaison for service learning and experiential learning, so she's a great resource. She's done a lot of community projects, recently one with the Literacy Center of West Michigan that produced an oral history for some of their clients, So it's and it's up on their website, so you get a chance to take a look at it. That's a great project as well. I'm going to hand it over to Eric Bridge from Aquinas. Good morning. My name is Eric Bridge. I'm coordinator of service learning at Aquinas College. And first of all, I just wanted to thank each and every one of you for being here. I appreciate your time. And um, I think it's a terrific opportunity. I, I appreciate also um, the day-to-day -day and some of the difference. I know um, 
there's a story that I had heard talking about the difference between higher ed and uh, nonprofit organizations and some of the business organizations. And in one of the one of the rooms, they were talking about these um, problems that were several years off in long range planning. And um, you know, the question, the hand rose, and somebody from a nonprofit organization said, "Yes, but today I need to feed the people standing outside in line." And I appreciate that you guys are, are involved in the day-to-day -day, um, in the trenches. And so we appreciate the work that you do throughout the communities. Um, and certainly we are um, looking forward to partnering and strengthening those partnerships to continue. So a little bit about Aquinas College Service Learning. I'm coordinator of service learning at Aquinas. Aquinas, we are a Catholic college. Um, we are in the Dominican tradition. Not all of our students are Catholic. We welcome um, people from all different faiths and traditions. We are, our service learning program is housed in our campus ministry office, and we serve about 1,800 full-time equivalent students, 2,300 total students. Um, at Aquinas, we have the Dominican charisms, and you'll see those listed. They're prayer, study, community, and service. And we've really built a culture of service, of social justice, and civic engagement at Aquinas. It's part of who we are. Um, to be a student at Aquinas is to be involved in community. There's such a culture. Um, whether it may be a requirement for a program or whether or not, you'll be touched and encouraged and challenged to be a part of that. We also utilize Catholic social teaching um, principles, um, large principles, to really engage our students in the deeper issues. So the dignity of each human person, regardless of where their, their background or where they're from, there's inherent dignity in each and every single person around our world. So some of those principles, we look for our partners to engage in and support. We also see service, service and service learning as a vehicle and not an end. Um, it isn't the end, but it's part of, it's part of a broader picture and it's part of, part of a broader calling. A lot of our time is, is spent um, service learning trips and programs, organizing those, coordinating those, similar to the video that we saw earlier this morning. Um, we, have, we work locally, we work around the country, and we have international programs, and we do all of those. We also work in teams um, with students and building student leaders, and so we're really looking at communities. How do we build community, and how do we not only focus on what we're doing, but how do we focus on the transformation? Um, what happens to me when I get involved? How am I a different person? Who am I um, in these opportunities? So those are some of the things that, that we love to uh, partner with you guys on. Um, CAVA, Community Action Volunteers of Aquinas, and SAC, Social Action Committee, are two of our organizations, student organizations that reside in our office. So we have student coordinators, and they have a number of projects um, that they coordinate. We have a Project Unite. It's an orientation in August. We involve our entire freshman class and new students in the community, and we're looking around in the East Town area close to Aquinas. We're looking for folks to work with on that one-day opportunity. Into the Streets is a week that we do in October, and that is, um, involves a series of activities and events with various community organizations, one day opportunities to kind of introduce students, get them out into the streets and get them learning about your organization. And if they'd like to connect, that's a connecting point for the rest of the semester. We have a Michigan Service Scholars Program which is run through AmeriCorps where students serve um, 300 hours of service a year. We also do community work study, primarily focused on tutoring in local schools. We offer internships, and we have living learning communities, residence hall involvement. Um, we have a, a variety of our student clubs and organizations are involved in, um, in community and in partnership, as well as academic-based service learning. Uh, many of our scholarships have a service component of them, and we also have honors society that has um, service requirements with it. And so those are all ways of connecting um, students with partnerships. Um, one of the things that we've realized in looking at this and going through this process um, and we've put as a priority is 
we do what we have a culture out there and we want to be we want it to be decentralized we want to be a hub we don't want to be a funnel to make everybody go through but we want to be a hub a connecting point and one of the things we're trying to get a better handle on is if we are a hub and there's people out there we have a lot of students out there doing things and a lot of different programs and so we're trying to measure we're trying to we're trying to get a good mechanism to track and to measure that involvement and so we're looking for ways to do that and specifically looking at outcomes how do we how do we do that and along with that strengthening and building local partnerships so i welcome conversations and thanks again for being here today We're going to hear from Megan from Kelvin College. I am Megan Cruz. Um, I'm the Associate Director of Service Learning at Kelvin. Um, our professional staff in our office includes our director, Jeff Bauman, and um, my co-associate co director, Noah Cruz. And we also work with a student staff of, a, of about 13 who, are, who we, we view as um, sort of paraprofessionals, um, and we are, our office is located in the Student Development Unit of Kelvin, and so especially with those 13, we are really focused on, on developing them. And then we also have um, several other student leaders um, that we also are, are focusing on their development um, through the activity of service learning. At Kelvin, we, we um, sort of separate or categorize our work um, by student-based service learning and academically-based service learning. So what we mean by student-based service learning is um, student-initiated um, projects or extracurricular things. Um, our most um, high-profile, I guess, event is Street Fest, which is um, part of our three-day first-year student orientation program in the fall. And every incoming student to Kelvin um, spends one day out in the community getting to know the city of Grand Rapids, which will be their home for the next four, maybe five years. Um, and they, uh, we also um, encourage them to build friendships with the group, th group that they're with um, for that day. And um, it gives them an opportunity to serve the city while learning about it. Um, so that's, we've, that um, Street Fest sends about 1,100 students and staff to participate each year over three days. This year's dates, I believe, are September 3, 4, and 5, and um, I would love to connect with many of you about that at the end of the day in the last workshop session. Um, we usually have about 65 organizations hosting Street Fest groups, so it is quite a mobilization, and we could not do it without many wonderful community partners. Um, other things that, that happen under sort of our student-based umbrella include blood drives. We host four blood drives a year, um, and also residence hall partnerships and spring break trips. Each of our residence halls is connected with an organization that they, while students come and go over the years, the residence hall um, maintains a partnership with that organization over years. And um, we're able to encourage students to get involved and get to know those organizations over time and also in, in, in ways other than just service. They, they, um, they raise money for that organization um, and it really does end up being an organization over, the, over a student's college years that they might go back to for an internship or, some, or an academically based project that they have to find later. Um, and spring break trips, we send students. Um, this past year, we had nine trips go out around the country and also a, a, a trip to the southwest side of Grand Rapids to learn about the immigrant experience in Grand Rapids, um, which is maybe you know, counterintuitive for a spring break that students would spend that week in their own city. But we really want to emphasize the, the, the wealth of our community right here and that students don't have to go across the country or around the world to um, serve and learn. Then academically based service learning is, as you've um, heard earlier this morning, it's um, service learning that connects a professor's goals for classroom learning to um, needs and opportunities in the community. And we really do welcome organizations to come alongside us in educating students. There are things that our students will learn um, 
intellectually, but also learn with their hearts that cannot be learned in the classroom. And so we look at all of you as community partners, as co-educators with us. Um, this past year, we had over a 1,000 students participate in acad academically-based service learning. This is out of a um, student body of about 4,000. 51 professors provided academically-based service learning as an option for their students. Um, one example, Calvin hosts Special Olympics, the regional games, um, each year. And so of the 1,000 people that that brings to campus, we provide um, 200 um, of the events volunteers. But academically-based service learning projects can happen um, off campus, certainly, whether it's um, an English 101 class that connects students with um, United uh, Community Outreach Ministries Homework House so that st college students are getting to know elementary school experiences and they use something about their, their friendship and their learning in that context to write their um, semester's term paper. Or senior design students in engineering who, um, who design something that is um, relevant and useful to a community domestically or abroad. Um, just to get your minds turning, we have a couple of um, information technology and web-based projects that need community partners right now. So if you have a computer system that needs some help or a website that needs a little oomph, um, find me and, and I'll get you connected. Thank you. Wow. Um, you, can <laughs> you can already begin to see the, the differences in, in each college and institution. I mean, there's a lot of commonalities. Obviously, we're all trying to engage our students in the community, or we call it academic service learning, work study, volunteer. I mean, even in the title at GRCC, by the way, my name's Mike Shavy again. At GRCC, we're called the Academic Service Learning Center. So some colleges, they might be the Volunteer Center. Some might be the Community Service Learning Center. Just look for service, hopefully, and you'll get directed to the right place. Um, at GRCC, we are very blessed. We um, are very well staffed. We have um, resources uh, available to us. Um, we have, I believe, four full-time staff uh, people in the center. I'm the associate director. We have a full-time director, Dr. Mindy Ferlin, who's going to be facilitating uh, this afternoon the panel discussion. Um, we have a full-time program coordinator um, who's also at AmeriCorps VISTA. And if Liz Kelly is in the room right now, she's probably not. Um, she's probably putting out fires right now. But um, she does an awesome job. And in, in just a second, I'm going to describe all of our programs, but without her, none of this would really go very well. Um, so she is pretty much the engine that, that supports our office. Um, we have a full-time administrative support person, and we have uh, multiple student workers, um, work-study students, practicum students, interns that all work in our office. Um, we do have four major programs. Um, the Michigan Service Scholars AmeriCorps program. I know, um, I think that was mentioned in most of the colleges uh, already. But again, that is an AmeriCorps award, award educational award, actually. Um, and so students, should they choose to serve, they have to serve 300 hours in one complete year. And in return, they'll get a $1,000 educational award that they can apply to either current or future tuition. Um, a lot of those students are also a part of our student scholars program. We have 10 students right now. So we have 10 students that are in our AmeriCorps uh, program and they are helping right now actually facilitate and coordinate and plan with Liz um, our next program which is the event service learning those are our one-day service opportunities where we'd like to get um, at least 200 students on one day it's usually about six hours um, with doing a service project and we have I think believe four major events throughout the year um, they're spread out we have two in the fall semester, and we have two in the winter semester. The first one being um, September 11th, National Day of Service. Um, the next one being Make a Difference Day, which is in the end of October. And then we'll do a Martin Luther King uh, Day Junior Service Project. And then we'll do an Earth Day Project. 
And so that all kind of totals a little over a thousand students that are engaged in the community during, during those events. We also invite um, anybody else from the community to participate in those events. They're, they are uh, welcome to participate. Um, the next program, we have the Community Service Work Study, which Wayne did a great job explaining that. We have 22 students currently right now that are working in the community with our community partners between 15 and 20 hours. And those jobs range, it varies, but um, throughout both the fall and the winter semester, so that's the ideal, that once you get a student, you submit your job description in the beginning of the semester. Uh, we'll work with you to post that position. We'll work with you to screen those students. We'll send you those students. You interview those students. So you select a student, and then they'll be placed with you, ideally, for both fall and winter semester. Um, there's about a 50% chance that that student that you'll have for that year will return the following year, assuming that their goal is to graduate from GRCC and, and possibly maybe transfer, I don't know, but to one of the other institutions, hopefully. Um, we, too, have curriculum service learning. We have a little over 1,000 students that will participate in that uh, fall and winter semester. We have um, just excellent faculty. I mean, we work with over 60 uh, instructors um, implementing service learning into the curriculum from a variety of departments and disciplines, culinary arts, um, English, we have philosophy, we have social work, we have biology, I mean, and it goes on and on. So, I mean, w if you're interested in any of those disciplines and can think of a need within your organization that might fit that, um, please let me know. We do work from a community partner model, meaning we are not necessarily randomly sending students out to serve. Um, ideally, what we like to do is to build capacity within the community with each nonprofit organization. So ideally what we would like to do is build a partnership roughly for three years. And in that three years, we'll work with you to uh, incorporate our programming with your needs. Some needs might fit well with just a work study student. And some needs might fit well with an event where you can get maybe 150 to 200 students to participate. So that's kind of the approach that we work with community partners. And so I don't know, at this time, did you have any? Yeah, so um, we've left you some time to do a little bit more networking. We have plenty more um, uh, food and beverages out in the hall. Please take advantage of that. And in about five to 10 minutes, I'll make an announcement and we'll just walk over to the Applied Technology Center. We'll have to cross the street. Hopefully it's not raining. We have to run really fast, and so enjoy the rest. Are there any questions regarding the day, regarding the event, regarding what you just heard? Huh? Good. Okay.